Hi guys. Today I want to discuss an impressive ancient quarry in Japan, Mount Nokojiri. For a mountain, Nokojiri is relatively short, with an elevation of 329 meters or less than 1,100 feet. But as an ancient stone quarry, a scale is truly massive, probably the largest and tallest in the entire world. The straight cliff fronts seen in these photos are man-made, wherein an unimaginable quantity of rocks have been cut and removed. In Japanese, Mount Nokojiri means Saw Mountain. It's believed that name came from the Hell Peak Point, a jagged cliff on the top projecting out from the mountain, which resembles a traditional Japanese saw, thereby the name Saw Mountain. The mountain is a volcanic tuff and had been a quarry since the Edo period from the 17th century until the 1980s. Tuff is a relatively soft, porous rock that is usually formed by the compaction and cementation of volcanic ash or dust. In outdoor quarries, masons start from the top and dig downwards. Since the Nokojiri mountaintop and the vertical cliffs are adorned with the same layered markings, it's conceivable that the ancient masons were daringly ambitious from the beginning, because they quarried from the mountaintop and over time reshaped the whole mountain. The magnitude of the stone quarry is jaw-dropping. Countless layers of quarry markings can be seen from the summit of the mountain on the striking tall cliffs and down to the bottom of the hills, as if the same technique had not been changed for hundreds of years. Upon close inspection, the evenly spaced, parallel slanted tool marks are quite uniform and accurate. Such fine markings cover all the quarried cliffs. Were these regular markings excavated solely by hand tools? What an incredible feat! Did this come from the hard work of generations of stonemasons using chisels, hammers, and pickaxes? Or was the site excavated by ancient high-tech tools from a lost civilization? After doing my research, I realized that both possibilities exist. So, in this video, I'll play the devil's advocate by presenting my reasonings on both sides and let you be the judge. As Mount Nokojiri, the epitome of centuries of hard and precise human labor, or is there much more to its creation? First, let me show you some other ancient Japanese quarries from the Edo period and beyond. These contemporaneous quarries contain recognized masonry markings of that era and are confirmed to be legitimate quarries whose stones have been used to construct the famous Edo castle and its surrounding structures. Spoiler alert! These quarries are very different from Mount Nokojiri. The Edo period is named after the city Edo, modern-day Tokyo, where the Tokugawa shogunate ruled Japan from 1603 until 1868. It was characterized by economic growth, strict social order, isolationist foreign policies, a stable population, overall peace, and popular enjoyment of arts and culture colloquially referred to as Great Edo. In 1603, Tokugawa Ieyasu ordered the various daimyo the task of rebuilding Edo Castle as the headquarters of the Tokugawa shogunate, with the work continuing under his successors. Daimyo were powerful Japanese magnates and feudal lords. Here are photos of the many ancient quarries used to provide a vast amount of stone to construct the extensive moats and defensive fortifications of the Edo Castle. During the Edo period of over 250 years, the shogunate periodically assigned the task of constructing and repairing certain portions of the moats and other stone structures to many daimyo clans, partly as a measure to drain these clans of their financial resources, which would reduce the possibility of any rebellion. Each daimyo who was assigned to quarry stone was also given a quota based on the size of their domain. As the stones were cut and prepared for shipping to Edo, the stones were marked with the daimyo's symbol or other markings so that the Tokugawa officials can tabulate how much stone was provided and make sure the daimyo met their quotas. These marks, called kokuin, also served to prevent other daimyo from stealing cut stone or laying claim to other daimyo's stone. Such symbols can be seen in many Edo quarries and sometimes on the castle walls. Quarrying stone is hard, dangerous work. 
A certain quarry documented that there were so many injuries that the stream through the quarry was often tinged red with blood. Even if it wasn't sanctioned by the daimyo, it's possible that the workers may have laid claim to another daimyo stone given the opportunity. Hence, there existed a necessity for masons to mark up their quarried stone. Many idol quarries are in the Azu Peninsula and the western coast of Sagami Province. Multiple outcrops are in close proximity to the sea, which permitted ease of transport of the heavy stones via ships to Edo, current-day Tokyo. By comparison, Mount Nokojiri is closer to Tokyo and not too far from the coast. Its stone was considered desirable as building materials, and it was said that its quarrying work started during the Edo period. However, there is no record of this gigantic quarry being used for the Edo Castle for over 250 years. That's a bit odd, wouldn't you say? A side note: This giant Buddha at Nokojiri was carved in 1966 with prayers for world peace. The quarries used for extracting stone for the Edo Castle are distinct from Nokojiri. Besides being much smaller in scale, they are mostly flat or on gentle slopes. The excavating work was often done through splitting boulders with wedges. This feather and wedge method is very effective and has been used by many ancient cultures and modern-day masons. Rocks split this way have fairly flat surfaces. In ancient times, stone blocks were separated by smashing a line of keyholes into the rock, into where wooden wedges were driven. Then the wedges were moistened. Causing their expansion and the cracking of the block along the line of holes, for a better control of the rock fracture, long grooves can be carved into the blocks, which keyholes were subsequently inserted. Numerous stones with quarry holes, splitting imprints, and mason's marks were uncovered in the remnants of these idol quarries. Blocks with splitting marks on multiple edges indicate that the stone was predominantly excavated using the feather and wedge technique. Many unused or discarded stone left on site have the mason's inscriptions, and may also contain the symbols of the daimyo involved in the project. These quarry marks are dramatically different from the finely carved rows of markings at Mount Nokojiri. In 2021, a portion of the old Edo Castle wall was discovered. Several stone blocks show the typical wedged quarry marks. Please keep in mind. That the castle and the surrounding structures have been repaired and reconstructed many times, including in the modern period. So not everything we see today at Tokyo represents the original idol work. Compared to the mountain-high, sharp-angled Nokojiri with imposing cliffs, the idol castle quarries look very crude and not nearly as sophisticated, although they are claimed to be from the same era. The Edo Castle stones should have showcased the best quality of stonework during that time, since they were excavated for the ruling shogun family. Yet, judging from the marks at these remaining quarries, it seems that the Nokojiri quarry masons were much more skillful, sophisticated, and proficient with their tools, because their way of extracting stone was refined, accurate, and clear-cut. Which left these beautifully adorned industrial-looking quarries. Work like this at such an immense scale should have impressed all spectators, especially three to four hundred years ago. Nokojiri quarries should have been praised or at least documented in historical records. But the strange thing is, not only was Nokojiri not commissioned to provide for the Edo Castle construction. There is also no written records of this monumental quarry operation during that time. Why is that? Other quarries left daimyo symbols, quarry names, and masonry signature marks carved in stone. Why weren't similar symbols or masonry marks found at Nokojiri? These questions should raise suspicion. Furthermore, the Nokojiri quarry marks are so consistent, parallel, and evenly spaced. They do not look like excavating marks, since such marks don't need to be parallelly carved. They, in fact, closely resemble machine marks. Modern rotary drum cutters can cut stone in horizontal rows with uniform lines in between. Sometimes, even these powerful machines with extremely hard cutter bits may not create markings as fine and homogeneous. 
Here we see side-by-side -side photos of the markings of Noko Jerry and modern hot rock excavating machines, which share a visible resemblance. Considering the enormous scale of the mountain being covered with the same delicate markings, it's hard to believe they were the work of hand tools. Though it would be much faster and efficient to excavate stone using machinery, Mount Nokojiri sure is comparable in shape and size with modern industrial quarries. So, is it possible that the gigantic mountain quarry was initially worked on by ancient machines of a prehistoric lost civilization and later rediscovered by local people and reused again as quarries? Some may argue skillful masons can definitely carve similar uniformed marks, which I agree with. But please remember that the marks at Nokojiri were excavating marks, not dressing marks. Dressing marks are the finished patterns carved on stonework for aesthetic purposes, like the various styles of stone finishes. Excavating marks, on the other hand, are the leftover marks of how masons cut stone from the bedrock. If the goal was to extract stone from the bedrock, then the workers will naturally use the easiest and most productive method to separate stone. At that stage, they would not spend time or labor to create nice patterns, because the roughing and dressing work come later. Dressing is the process to cut stone in the desired shapes and appearances. In many areas of Mount Nokojiri, the quarry marks left on the bedrock are outstandingly uniform consistent and well-carved. They look like dressing marks instead of excavating marks. There is no good reason for masons to make the great effort to dress the bedrock, unless creating such uniformed marks was easy to do. Thus the machine theory does have an edge. Could these marks be the byproduct when masons used chisels or pickaxes to cut stone blocks from the mountain? This way when the blocks were created, they automatically were dressed with fine chisel marks. I doubt that. Here are the old walls and buildings built with Nokojiri stone blocks. Only some have chisel marks, and these marks do not have the same level of carving consistency or high quality. So far, I have presented arguments to support a non hand tool creation hypothesis for Nokojiri quarry site. Now, let's switch sides and see evidence supporting the theory that a quarry was done by traditional human work. Besides the feather and wedge splitting method, another common masonry technique of quarrying smaller stone blocks is to dig separation trenches on four sides around square bases using pickaxes. After that, wedges can be used to further split the blocks and to separate them from the bedrock at the bottom. As some ancient Greek and Roman quarries, we can see the great patterns of stone blocks using this method. Pickaxe marks would be left on the trenches attached to the bedrock. Seasoned masons can keep their swinging and striking of pickaxes in a relatively consistent manner, like the old-time German masons creating pretty regular parallel marks on a millstone, which might explain the parallel and evenly spaced markings at Nokojiri. And since the stone blocks were extracted from top down layer by layer, that would have created the horizontal rows on the quarry cliffs. Moreover, there are other ancient quarries that share similar characteristics with Nokojiri. Their stone was regarded as desirable. These quarries were said to be in operation during the Edo era and are in good sizes, and seem to be quarried with highly skillful masons. But somehow, they were all excluded from being used for the long-lasting work of Edo Castle as neither records nor daimyo symbols were found. These quarries all have layered features, sharp walls, and mostly regular chisel or pickaxe marks. Some of these similar quarries show identical quarry marks with no kojiri, while some present less orderly cutting marks. The idol quarries left daimyo symbols, quarry names, and masonry signature marks carved in stone. On the mountainous Nokojiri cliffs, there are two markings from previous quarry companies. Both are on the same wall in an area named the Stone Stage. The lower one was from the Suzuki Shuraman family, which was in operation until 1985. This family used modern powered saws to extract stone. The earlier upper inscriptions were likely done after 1950 
since they were absent in this alleged 1950s photo. This interesting photo revealed a few details on a quarry operation back then. No machines were used, and the masons cut stone blocks with primitive tools. Pickaxes were likely used to dig trenches around stone blocks, and then wedges were inserted at the bottom to split the blocks from the bedrock. Later quarry work continued to cut down the rock until 1985, which resulted in the tall rock cliff today. We can recognize this wall is the same one in the 1950 photo by the setback here and the curved markings that dented the quarry cliff. Decades of work have removed large amounts of stone. Areas excavated with pickaxes left similar rows of markings like the previous ones on top, and a later modernized operation left saw marks at the bottom. It would be great if I could locate clear photos zooming into the earlier quarry marks on this wall, so we can compare them with other parallel marks at Nokojiri to see if they match. But still, from this photo, it seems rather clear that using the ancient hand tools, generations of stone masons can cut away unthinkable quantities of rocks and reshape a mountain. Therefore. There is nothing mysterious about Mount Nokojiri's steep quarried cliffs. Just hundreds of years of dedicated labor. As for the uniform, the parallel cutting marks, perhaps the ancient Japanese workers were diligent, highly skilled, and efficient, and they chose to do their work that way. Well, please don't forget other contemporaneous stone quarries I showed you earlier. They were the documented work of the diligent ancient Japanese masons. The daimyo symbols and masonry marks on them prove their authenticity. There are hundreds of such quarries which supplied the Edo Castle construction, and they predominantly used the wedge splitting method. The comparison photos between them and the Nokojiri show undeniable differences. I want to direct your attention to the curved markings on the wall of the two inscriptions at Nokojiri. I found them very curious since they are large. Densely spaced, highly accurate, and have the same curvatures. Using the horizontal rows as a reference, we see the worker is shorter than six rows. Move the scale up. Let's measure the length of the curvy stroke marks. They are about the same height of a standing person. That's beyond the capacity of a mason's controlled swing range with a pickaxe. It would be mission impossible to strike these evenly spaced. Parallel curved marks with pickaxes. I have to say they truly appear to be machine marks. Maybe the machine's operating cutter accidentally hit the wall and left these marks. Let me show you photos of actual pickaxe markings in ancient quarries in other regions of the world. For example, these marks are found in Egypt, and these are located in Norway. These pickaxe markings are not that regular or parallel. When compared with the Nokojiri quarry marks, here is footage of using a shorter pickaxe to dig trenches to extract a stone block. I tried to search for videos showing masons using long pickaxes to excavate stone on YouTube, but I couldn't find a good clear one. In this trenching footage, from afar, the cutting marks appear to be consistent, though with a closer look, we can see they are not as refined as the Nokojiri markings. The same thing with the German millstone video. The veteran masons created a more uniform markings, though a clearer shot reveals that it's still not up to the level of the ones observed at Nokojiri. At Mount Nokojiri, besides the quarry, there is also an ancient temple. Even the tool marks at the temple area housing small Buddhas are not as consistent or parallel as its quarry marks. I also try to search in Japanese to see if there is any exhibition of their standard way of creating stone blocks with trenches, but I found none. Japan has preserved many of its historical customs to make crafts, woodwork, stonework, and many more, and there are plenty of stone splitting videos in Japanese using wedges. Most of them are referred to as their traditional splitting method. However, I have not seen one video displaying the beautiful and rhythmic slanted cutting work presented at Mount Nokojiri and other quarries with similar markings. If this stone excavating technique was used to carve out a mountain 
and in many ancient quarries from the 17th century to the 1950s. How come it's difficult to find a video exhibiting this popular and long-practiced stone-cutting methods on YouTube? What does this absence of evidence possibly mean? So, what is it then? It's Mount Nokojiri, a prehistoric quarry excavated by machines. Or is it a superb exhibition of amazing ancient human work? Is it possible that some parts of the mountain were quarried by a lost civilization via machines? Millennia years later, ancient Japanese found the site, inspired by the markings, and continued quarrying the rock with tools that created similar markings. By playing the devil's advocate, I have presented arguments on both sides. What's your take? I look forward to read your comments. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and share with others. You can also support me on Patreon, which is a monthly charge, or on Buy Me a Coffee. I appreciate your support. This is Curious Being. I'm Tina. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.